Hello, welcome to my first video production. My name is Padaswo Josiah Park, and by the way, I myself am a Korean American. Going over this material has been super interesting to me, and I hope it's the same for you. Our story begins in 1903 upon the SS Gaelic, which was in transit from Korea to Hawaii, carrying the first Korean immigrants. They came to Hawaii to work in pineapple and sugar plantations. These workers came as a result of the work of ambassador slash missionary Horace Allen and arrived in Hawaii on January 13, 1903. When the contracts had ended, half of the immigrants returned back to Korea because of the difficulty of adjusting to the foreign culture. The other half moved to the U.S. mainland to work. Many of the immigrants brought new immigrants from Korea, mainly picture brides. Women who were paired with Korean men in the United States by matchmakers with nothing more than pictures, aka a long-distance high-stakes tinder. This first boon of immigration ended with the passing of the Oriental Exclusion Act of 1924. Although the immigration of Koreans was significantly stunted, Korean immigration still continued with the arrival of Korean college students and political refugees. During this time, an infamous place that many Koreans were processed was Angel Island. To give you a visual, I actually went there to get some footage. These are some of the structures on Angel Island. This is the immigration center. The immigrants, mostly Chinese and Japanese, but some Korean, would apply for access into the rest of the United States. Until then, they would have to wait for weeks, live in cramped conditions, and be discriminated against. The Asians would have access to an outside recreation area, but the European and Russian immigrants would have a larger recreation area, shorter wait times, and better living conditions. From that time, Korean immigration has steadily increased with the passing of the U.S. Immigrant and Nationality Act of 1965, which removed the previous quota system that the Oriental Act put into place. From 1965 to today, many immigrants have been highly skilled as South Korea has developed. Because San Francisco is the epicenter of Korean immigration, after the annexation of Korea by Japan, many have fled to San Francisco to petition the U.S. to help fight for Korean independence. Example of these activists is Han chan -ho. He established activist institutions such as the Gongnip Association and the Friendship Society. These institutions will later become the Korean National Association, which acted as a government for stateless Koreans. Fast forwarding to today, Korean immigration is as strong as ever, helping title Koreans as one of the fastest growing minority groups. Politically, Koreans aren't as political as they used to be. This may be because 3 in 4 Koreans aren't as good at English as most people. Culturally, Koreans have contributed much to San Francisco. K-pop and Korean barbecue. Anyway, that's been a recap of everything. Thanks for watching and peace.